Hello everyone, this is Harry Gill and in this video we are going to look into the file class which is present in the default Java installation. In this video we will look at a very high level on what a file system is and where does file system fit in the whole interaction when Java program tries to read or write data onto a hard drive. And then we will continue looking into the file.java class. So what is a file system? File system is a way to organize and store the data on the hard drive. From the organized perspective, it's the structure of directories and files. And from the storing perspective, it's how the data is stored in zeros and ones onto the hard drive. File system is an integral part of the operating system. So each of the operating system, Mac, Linux, Windows, each of them has a file system as a part of the operating system. And these file systems are operating system dependent. And the file system is the software that operating system uses to read and write data from the hard disk. Now let's see how does Java program that we write interacts with the hard disk. So we would write a Java program which is .java file and as you know once we compile it would create a .class file and then we can use this .class file onto a JVM. So JVM is system dependent and that's why I have color coded. However, as you would know Java is independent of the operating system. So JVM interacts with the file system as per the instructions written in the Java program. It interacts with the file system. File system interacts with the hard disk to read and write data. So Java program doesn't do a direct interaction with the hard disk. It goes through the file system. And file system, as I mentioned, is a part of operating system. So at a very high level, this is where our Java program, the JVM and the file system sits in the whole stack. Now let's move on and have a look at the file class. The file class is used to represent a actual file on the hard disk. So it's a Java representation of the actual file. We can use the file class to do the basic operation, for example, creating a file, renaming a file, and deletion of a file. And the renaming operation we can use to move the file from one location to another. Now let's jump into the IntelliJ and have a look at the example. So in here I have a main class and an empty main method. So in this video we are going to look into how to create a new file. We will create a new directory and then we will move the file into that directory. We will do the cleanup which is deletion of the file and directories we created above. And also we will look into some important methods that you need to be aware in the file class. So let me start with creating a new file. So I'm going to declare a variable of the type file and I'll name the variable as log file. Before I move on writing more code, I want to jump into the code of the file class and wanted to highlight a couple of things. First off, the file class is present in java.io package and this package is available in a default installation of Java. So the second thing I wanted to highlight is if you look at the code of the file class, so it has a reference to a file system class and this file system, if you check the default file system code, in my case, I'm writing this code on Mac and Mac is based on Unix based systems. So that's why I have this code. If you are in a Windows based system, you will see a different code here. Now let me close these and let's get back to the main.java file. I am now going to create an instance of file using the new keyword and the constructor of the file needs at least one argument and that argument is the name of the file. In my case, I'm going to name it as log.txt. Don't get confused with this new keyword. So the new keyword is only creating an instance of the file. It's not creating the actual file. So the actual file I will create in the next line. So to create a new file, I will be calling 
create new file method on the log file variable that I just created. And this method throws a checked IO exception. You can either handle it using the try catch by yourself and do various things. In my case, I'm going to simply add it to the main method. And now I'm going to save and run the program. The program ran successfully. Let me bring up the terminal and show you what the program has done. I am currently at the root of the project and I'm going to list the content of the directory. As you see here, we have log.txt created and this was done by our Java program. Now next up, I'm going to create a directory. So even though the class that we are looking into is called file, the same class is used to manipulate directories as well. So there's something to keep in mind. So I'm going to create a variable of the type file. I'm going to name the variable as dir. Just for the readability, I know that I will be creating a directory. And I'm going to name the directory as logs. The method we use to create the directory is either mkdir or mkdirs. So I'll explain you the difference, but in my case, I'm going to create it using the mkdirs. So the main difference between mkdir and mkdirs is the later one will create the non-existent parent directory as well. So, which essentially means, so let's say I am giving the directory name as a slash b slash c slash logs. So essentially I want to create a directory called logs in a, b, c. If the directory a or b or c does not exist, then mkdirs will create them for us. But if I use the mkdir version without an s, in that case, the parent directory is not created. So in that case, if let's say A exist and B within A exist, but the directory C doesn't exist. So MKDIR will not create C and hence it will also not create logs. And in that case, it simply returns false indicating that it was not successful to create the logs directory. So I'm going to remove A, B and C. So this command will create a directory logs in my project root. And now I will save and run the program. The program ran fine. Let me head back into the terminal and list the content of the directory. And as you see here, the logs directory is created. Now let's head back into IntelliJ and see how the file that we have created, the log.txt, how to move that file around. So in my case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to move that file into the logs directory that I have created. Whenever we have to move a file, we need a source from where the file is being moved and we need a destination where the file will be moved. We already know the source. The source is the log file. What we need to do is we need to create a destination. So that's where we will tell where to move that source file. For that, I'm going to create a file type variable called destination. You can name it anything you want. And for this one, I'm going to use a different constructor, the overloaded constructor of the file class. And the constructor I will use is, it will take two arguments. The very first argument is a parent and the second argument is the file name. So in our case, I want to move the file into the logs directory. So for me, the parent will be logs. I can give this in a string format or it can also take a file type variable. Since I already have a dir variable of the type file, I'm simply going to use that. The second part or the second argument of the file is the actual name of the file. See, when we give the destination, you also have an option to actually change name as well. Like to what name do you want at the destination location? If there is a use case and you want to rename the file, let's say add some date stamp to the file name, you can always do that. But in my case, I'm going to simply keep the file name as log.txt. So now we have a destination where we want to move the file. And now I'm going to use the source file and going to call rename to method and give the destination to it. 
So a couple of things to note. First of all, the rename to method is called on the source and we will provide a destination. The second thing is, even though the method name is renamed to, it sounds like we are kind of renaming a file, but since we have given a different destination, this also helps us move the file into a different location as well. All right, now I'm going to save and run this program. The program ran fine. I'll jump into the terminal and list the content. And as you see, the log.txt that was present in this directory is now gone. And now listing the content of the logs directory, as you see, the log.txt has been moved. So this is the process you can use to move a file from one location to a different. Now the next step we are going to do is the cleanup. So in this case, we will delete the file that we created and we delete the directory that we have created. And to delete a file or a directory, we simply call a delete method. Now that we have moved the file to a destination location, so I'll need to call the delete method on a destination variable because this is where my file exists now. So this line will remove the file. And if I call the delete on the directory, this will remove the directory as well. I'm now going to save and run the program. Heading back to the terminal, let me clear the screen. And as you see, we do not have the logs directory because we have done the cleanup. Now, while you're here, try one thing for me. Try to delete the directory and leave the file in, like don't delete the file like I have done. Try this out and see what happens and how does the deletion works if the directory is not empty. And let me know in comments. For now, I'm going to comment this cleanup section because in the next section, I'm going to discuss some methods on the file class and we do need a file and a directory being existing there. So I'm going to for now comment this out. So I'm pasting some code that I have already prepared. I'll discuss line by line and see what individual method do. And finally, I will run the program to show you the output. I will be checking this code into Git the link of which I will put in the description. The first method is get absolute file. So this method will return a absolute path of a file. Even though the name consists file, this method can be used on directories as well. So which means if you call this method get absolute file on the dir variable, which is our directory, it will return an absolute path of that directory. The next method is get name. As the name of the method suggests, this method can be used to get the name of a file or a directory upon which that method is being called. The next method is parent and this method is pretty self-explanatory as well. It will return just the parent of the file or directory you are calling this method upon. And the parent is essentially the directory in which that object exists. So the next method is exist. This will return true or false, whether the file or the directory exists on the file system or not. So the next method is last modified. This method will return the time from when that resource has been last modified. And the time that's returned is in milliseconds and which starts from the epoch. In the if condition, I have this is directory method, which I'm calling on the dir variable. So what I'm essentially doing in the next two lines is I'm checking whether the resource that I have is a directory. And if it is a directory, then I'm listing all the files within that directory. So the list file returns an array of files within that directory that I'm calling it upon and I'm using stream to print individual directory. If you're not aware of stream, I have already prepared a full video on the lambdas and, and stream. So please feel free to have a look at those. So now I'm going to run this program and show you the output. So here is the output of the program. So as you see, the absolute path of the file is printed. I know it's absolute because it starts with the slash. I'm using Mac. If you're using Windows, yours will start with the letter of the drive, colon, and then slash, and further on. 
name of the file is printed as log.txt. The parent name is logs because my log.txt now exists under logs directory. So it prints the parent name. Does the file exist? It does. And the last modified time is printed in the milliseconds. And the next line that you see is the output of the list files. Since I have only one file, it's only printing once, but if I have more than one file, feel free to create more and have a look at the output. So that's pretty much it that you need to know about the file class and a few commonly used methods. I haven't discussed all the methods, but whenever you hit a method, just have a read at the documentation and it should be pretty straightforward. There are two main takeaways that I want you to take out of this session. The very first one is the file.java class can represent both files and directories. So don't get confused with the name of the class. The secondly, the file class is just a representation of the file on the hard disk. So what that means is we can't use the file class to read or write the content of the file. We can use it to represent it, but we can't read or write a file content using file class. How to read and write the content of a file? We will look in the next video. Hit the like button if you have liked the video and please do provide me any suggestions if you have. Until next time, bye-bye.